Hello everyone, this is Deb McBride and welcome to the Golden Astrologer podcast. Today is Sunday, November 17th, 2019, and I am broadcasting from lovely Escazú, Costa Rica, and we have another interesting astrological week ahead, which it's always an interesting week here at the Golden Astrologer because astrology is never ending and always profound. So this week, We have some planetary shifts going on that are very important. We actually have three big shifts this week, so let's get into it. The first shift occurs on Tuesday as Mars goes into Scorpio, 2.41 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, depending on where you are in the world, that might happen in your afternoon, it might happen in your morning, it may happen the night before. Um, But what is important about this is Mars is leaving Libra and moving into Scorpio. Now, it has been in Libra since early October, and it doesn't love Libra. So it's going from a sign that it's not comfortable in, where it's really at its detriment, and it's going into its uh, sign of co-rulership, or the sign it ruled until they discovered Pluto. And once Pluto was discovered, it became the ruler of Scorpio. But really, Mars is a co-ruler, and it is the original ruler of Scorpio. So it loves to be in Scorpio, and that's what it's going to do as of Tuesday. And this is a very important moment, because between now and Tuesday, Mars is at the end of Libra, which we know before it goes in to the next sign. Mars is at the point of 29 degrees Libra, and Mars at 29 Libra is a planetary recurrence or or shall I say a remembrance of things past (laughs) and what we're doing here is we're looking back at a famous point now famous point being 29 degrees Libra now whenever anything spends time at 29 degrees Libra it's going to uh, trigger things from the years 1981 and 1982 and maybe 1983, but really 81 and 82. And the reason for this is that at that point in history, that was where Saturn and Pluto were engaging. That's where they conjunct at, at the end of Libra, 29 Libra. And so there were many world events. There was, you know, the inauguration of Ronald Reagan in the United States. There were events in Israel. There were events in um hostages in Iran there were there were all sorts of things going on and globally and in our personal lives too there were things going on if you look back at 1981 if you were around then perhaps there were things going on for you that are feeding into your life now as we experience Saturn Pluto so as we know as I talk about all the time till everyone is bored with me um, Saturn and Pluto are joining for conjunction the last time they did this was the early 1980s at the end of Libra and then early Scorpio since Mars is triggering the 29 degree Libra, it's enhancing the Saturn Pluto that you experienced back then. So you're going to have a ghost from the past, as my teacher would have said, and he would probably still say, and he's probably saying on his website right now, which I think I looked at the other day and he is saying, um, Saturn Pluto is one recurrence as it, in and of itself. To have something, you know, Mercury whizzed by it, Venus whizzed by it, sure, early in these months. Um, but Mars, you know, it takes a little longer. So it's slowing. It's slowing and it's a little slow. It's two, di- two days of really this Mars over that point from back then. So you may have a ghost visit. I had a ghost visit. I visited a few ghosts. And um, it's very important to look at those ghosts and see how they might play out in your life if Hopefully they don't bring up conflicts like they did then. And what we usually say, and what my teacher always tells us, and well, told us when I was studying with him, was that it's like driving by, you know, the seat of an accident. You look and you, it's not that accident anymore. It's not 1981. It's 1980. It's not 1982 or 83. Thank goodness. That was a particularly difficult time. Um, it's now. And if you're experiencing now, the way you are experiencing now, you're looking at it and you have a ghost revisit. So something will blow through your house and you'll go, oh, okay, I know what that is. I remember what that is from back then. And so coupled with Saturn Pluto, there's going to be a real recurrence. There's going to be a real remembrance of things past. And Mars is triggering, it's ruled by 
you know, it's ruling Scorpio. It's co-ruler with Pluto. And so they, Saturn and Pluto are in the sign of Mars's exaltation. And so that's important as well because they Mars likes it in Capricorn, which it'll go into, you know, in the not too distant future. But right now Mars is leaving Libra and going into Scorpio. And as it's doing that before Tuesday in the wee hours of the morning Eastern time, we are revisiting some things that happened back then. Now, if there are things that are happening in your life that are reminding of you back then, don't indulge them, just see them for what they are, know that they are a recurrence, and just keep moving forward. Because we have to move forward. We can't dwell in 1981 or 82. Unless, of course, they kind of pop up in your face and make ugly things happen, which I doubt at this point they're doing. So it's another trigger to the Saturn-Pluto. Anything that hits 29 degrees of Libra, that means the moon every month when it hits 29 degrees of Libra is going to bring these things up. But mostly Mars, because it stays there a while and it stays there, you know, today and tomorrow, yesterday, today, tomorrow, Monday, you know, it's going to give us that hint of what that's all about. So what Saturn Pluto might be defining for us, what Saturn Pluto defined for us back then versus what, what we're living now, how it's changed. You know, and this is a good measurement for everyone to pay attention to. If you were around, even if you were a child back in 1981, look at what happened back then and look at the difference between then and now. I can only hope for you that this is a major coming forward of like, you can look at your life and you say, wow, I've really achieved a lot. I've grown, I've achieved, I've become a better person. I've become uh, happier in my life. I have a better life. I own a better life because I made it that way. That is, that's the secret here. So I think that it's best to just, you know, take a moment and reflect and use this time, use these days ahead, today, tomorrow, and, you know, maybe as it hits zero degrees Scorpio, because Saturn and Pluto definitely were hanging out there together, just sort of connect it to where you are now and the Saturn Pluto that you're experiencing and how do they feed into each other? How do they relate to one another? How do they enhance one another? And how does it feel to look back at that time and know that you are way advanced from there and you've changed your life and hopefully for the better? So that's a little starting lesson of the week. So there, that's where we are now. We've got that Mars at the end of Libra. It's moving into Scorpio on Tuesday. When it moves into Scorpio, it will stay there. And it will stay there all of December. And it won't move into... Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, no, that's right. All of December. And it won't move into Sagittarius till early in the new year. So we have the rest of the year with Mars and Scorpio. My goodness, it's the end of the year. And Mars likes it there. So dive deep make intense things. Mars going into Scorpio is going to help us relive everything we've just done with Mercury in Scorpio, which is going to continue till December 9th. And Mercury, that's the second part of the week. Mercury goes direct on Wednesday in the afternoon to 12 p.m. Eastern time. Now, that's 11 degrees of Scorpio. If you have something at 11 degrees fixed, it's going to get triggered by this, especially if it's in Scorpio. It's going to get triggered. You know, Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius, those are the fixed signs. It's going to give us a little bit of, you know, a, a tingle, a realization of something as it moves forward. I have found that this Mercury and Scorpio retrograde really helped me dive deep into some work I'm doing and to understand things differently and to... I ho and to, to, to sort of embrace what's next and what I might not have been looking at and what was staring me in the face and what's now become, you know, integral in, in a path for me and my work. I hope that other people have had the same thing happen. I know that other people have just from talking to them. I know other people who have gone through something um, in this time that I've been knowing them and they've they've like experienced a, a revitalization of their work a sorting out of details uh, you know it's it's mercury we had that transit of mercury last week that for some people was revelatory and for others it was a little bit crushing with that full moon so i know that people experienced some things last week that were not exactly wonderful and 
you have to look at that. You have to look at what happened during the transit of Mercury and the full moon last week because they were together. And what went on for you? What did you learn? What was important? Um, it was a significant turnaround for some people. And some things, you know, I heard of lots of different uh, stories that were good and then not so good stories. So there was a mixture of things. When you have, either way, either way, I was going to say, if you have a not so good story, then look back at it and see what happened and, and understand it and see where it's leading you during this Mercury retrograde time in these next few days. Figure out what you've been learning and what you need to take responsibility for about yourself or about your details of your life or what is now obvious to you that you're going to handle. So this is significant. That's significant. So it's important to pay attention to what is happening for you uh, during this retrograde as we finish it up and what may have given you some insight. Insight is a big deal during Mercury retrograde. We like insight. Where did the insight come from? What part of your life did it touch? And if you experience something difficult during the transit of Mercury and the full moon last week, then I invite you to recognize and connect with whatever that was and whatever area of your life it's coming from. And is it a wake-up call? For some people, it's a wake-up call. And I saw a couple of wake-up calls last week, and um, they were dramatic, not because... Uh, just because it was in, in, in Scorpio, you know, it was in Scorpio, but also it was dramatic because what happened was dramatic. And, and so people weren't paying attention. Now they have to. So if we don't pay attention, if we're not on the ball, you know, we get, we get a in, piece of information from the universe. It's going to let us know things. So while we're collecting information, and I certainly collected information in these last few weeks, I, th I think we have to look at the information we've collected and what's going to work and what isn't and what we're going to see going forward. Um, so Mercury goes direct. It goes direct at 11 degrees, 11 and a half degrees on Wednesday. By Thursday, Friday, it's starting to move forward. Now, Mercury went retrograde on Halloween. So that was the 31st. It's almost three weeks. I can't believe it since we've had that retrograde where it went retrograde is 28 degrees Scorpio and it's not going to hit 28 degrees Scorpio for the rest of this month because we're still going to be dealing with the slowness of Mercury it'll get to 18 and it won't get to 28 degrees Scorpio till about the 7th or the 8th of December and then it's going to pop out and go into Sag so and that'll make things lighter too you know in time for the holiday season Mercury is going to go on that voyage into Sagittarius. But when it gets to that 28 degree Scorpio, what was happening for you on Halloween? What was happening at that time? Other than trick-or-treaters coming to your door and buying candies um, for them um, and taking your kids out. What was happening on Halloween, October 31st, if you don't celebrate Halloween? Something was going on that was giving you some information. Um... I'll share with you what I was getting instinctively, intuitively, everything's changing. Everything's changing, everything's changing, everything's changing. And it's changing at such a rapid rate due to the, I feel like we're speeding in a rocket towards that Saturn Pluto in January. And it's just, we're flying towards that transformation and everything is changing. It's changing, it's changing, it's changing. And some of us are being uprooted. Some of us are being um, connected deeply. Some of us are being aware of something new, but you have to see it as positive and powerful. You have to see it as a step forward. If you're doubting anything in your life, you've got to take the leap and trust it. You know, if you've got to just take that leap and see what's on the other side of this. If you're not taking a leap, I invite you to call an astrologer, me or anyone else, and they're going to help you see that. Okay, moving forward, the third change this week is the sun is going to change signs, and that's not till the 22nd. The 22nd is when the sun enters Sagittarius. Ta-da! It goes into Sagittarius, a happy place. Um, the sun is a fiery energy. Sagittarius is a fiery, fiery sign. And things should lighten up a little bit as the sun goes into Sag. As we saw Venus three weeks ago, 
or two and a half weeks ago, go into Sag, and it will be three weeks when the sun goes into Sag, since Venus entered Sag. Uh, the sun is going to enter Sag, and things are going to get clearer, for sure. Um, it's a different energy than when Venus switched signs, because Venus doesn't love Scorpio. So when the sun goes in, it won't be as, I don't think it'll be dramatic as it was three weeks ago, but this is a very nice, happy uh, place to be for the holidays. Then that's why people start having parties because <laughs> Sag is a party sign. But one of the other important things that we're going to see in these next few weeks is that um, Jupiter, the ruler of Sagittarius, is going to change signs. And it's going to, you know, we've had this wonderful year of Jupiter and Sagittarius, and it only happens once every 12 years where it's in its own sign. And it's an amazing thing to behold. Like, things open up. Awareness happens. You travel. You meet people. You know things. You see things. And it's, I think it's, in some ways, it's been an amazing year. In some ways, it's been a difficult and complicated year because we got this revving up of these two big planets together. But next Sunday, Venus and Jupiter are going to come together in a conjunction in the 8.30 in the morning Eastern time. And so the sun will be in Sag, <coughs> excuse me, ruled by Jupiter. Venus will be in Sag. And the two of them, they're going to join in Sagittarius next Sunday as Jupiter starts to have its release and leave its own sign because Venus is moving into Capricorn next Monday, the 25th, the day after. And it is really, uh, it shows us how close Jupiter really is to being at the end of its own sign. It's really, right now, it's, it's 26, but it's going to whiz through those last four degrees until early December when it goes into Capricorn. Jupiter does not love Capricorn, but we're going to talk more about that when the moment comes in a few weeks. It's profound. So we're in some profound times. We're in some profound changes. Uh, enjoy these days ahead. Enjoy Mercury going direct. Enjoy the sun going into Sagittarius. And please do something special for yourself when Venus conjuncts Jupiter. Fall in love. Buy a puppy <laughs> or adopt a puppy. Adopt a kitten. Um, do something wonderful. Uh, go water skiing for the first time. Do something adventurous. Um, dive into something. And be careful when you're diving into something, of course, always. But, you know, dive into something and have a little bit of reckless abandon. This happens once. It's going to happen once in Sagittarius this year. Once. And it's really kind of um, amazing how, you know, Venus and Jupiter, you know, don't come together very often and they aren't in the same sign at the same time. But this is a lovely aspect we're going to have next Sunday. So do something to celebrate. Don't get inebriated, um, but do something to celebrate where you feel like you have been rewarded for the work you've done in this year. And, you know, aside from aside from where we've been in this year and aside from how we have grown and changed and, and moved, um, you know, we don't get this aspect very often. I will tell you this. Back in January, so Venus went retrograde last year, if you remember, and that was kind of complicated at the end of last year. Venus was retrograde in Scorpio, and it went... You know, it took a long time to get into Sagittarius after that, but did go into Sagittarius in January of this year. And so Venus actually gave us a gift. Venus and, and Jupiter were quite uh, close and actually made a conjunction back in January. This doesn't happen very often. This happened on January 22nd of this year, and now it's happening again on November 24th. Wow, this is a gift and you have to see this gift in your life and you have to look at the gift you got back then and compare it to the gift you got, you've gotten now. So what you want to do is you want to look back in January. So we got a lot of looking back to do. You can look back to 1981, 82 
And then later in the week and at the weekend, you're going to look back to January 22nd. What were you doing on January 22nd? And you're going to see where it's taken you when you get to next Sunday, the 24th of November. So here it's been these months and almost a whole year. And how exciting is that to look at this and see how far you've come and what the advantage has been and what gains you have made and where you have jumped ahead by light years and where the gifts are in your life and the gratitude. So I know if you have gratitude, you have gratitude every day. If you're a person who's aware of gratitude, you have gratitude on a regular basis and you're sure to to be grateful and not take things for granted. Um, What you want to look at is the gratitude you had then and the gratitude you have now and what was going on then and what's going on now and how is it related? And if this is the perfect week because, you know, if you're if you're an American and you're in the United States, Thanksgiving is Thursday the 28th. So we've got like another 11 days till that happens. But this is the perfect time for gratitude. And so I'm encouraging everyone who's listening to me and everyone to pass it along to your friends the the theme of the week in the next couple of weeks is gratitude. So be grateful. Be grateful for where you've been. Be grateful for what you have, what is to come. And grateful because whatever was going on on the 22nd of January, maybe we'll come back and visit you again. Because this is really pretty amazing that we're getting this twice in such a short amount of time. That doesn't happen. So, you know, maybe Venus is retrograde, even though it was difficult last year, a year ago. It postponed its visit to Sagittarius to a point where Jupiter went into its own sign and they met up and we've gotten them together again. This is like having a gift from the goddess twice in one year. Well, aren't we fortunate and aren't we grateful? And here's something if you don't know this, if you're grateful for what you have now and you're grateful for what is to come, you set up your future. So say you're like, saying, I'm grateful for that child I had. I'm grateful for my son, my daughter, even though you don't have a child yet and you want to have a child. You can say that. You can say, I'm grateful for anything that you have in your future because it sets the wheels in motion for your future. And so this is a really good time to think about what you're grateful for. Write it down, manifest it, because whatever you're grateful for now is going to happen. Look at this. Whatever you might have been grateful for back in January is might be manifesting next weekend or right now. And so be, be grateful, have gratitude for something you don't know you have yet that you don't see in your life yet and set the wheels in motion and the energy going forward to know that you're going to have gratitude for when that event happens. It doesn't matter. Time doesn't matter. It's a construct. So be grateful for whatever it is right now. Um, Be grateful for something you really want to achieve in your life or something you want to have happen in your life. It hasn't happened yet. And you you are planting the seeds. And congratulate yourself for getting that. So, very important message of the week. Gratitude. And have gratitude every moment. Nothing on this earth is guaranteed. But we can have grateful for the things that we... In we uh, the seeds of intention and for what we already have so also on next Sunday the 24th Mars will oppose Uranus so Mars and Uranus are going to oppose each other when we have um, the same Venus Jupiter so Mars you know the ex- <laughs> this is an exciting aspect Mars and Uranus together are very powerful and can be volatile. So that's why I'm saying be careful. If you're going to learn how to water ski, be careful. (laughs) Um, If you're going to do something new and dive right in, do have some, don't be reckless. That's the word I'm saying. You know, you should, you should, I'm telling you to dive in and be careful. Dive in and don't be reckless. So do your deep dive, but be conscious of what you're diving into and be, don't be reckless. Um, Mars and Uranus together, Mars is the planet of action. Mars is the planet of assertion and energy, and it's going to be, you know, in its sign of Scorpio that it loves. Uranus is in the opposing sign of Taurus, as we know, and they are going to 
oppose at about three, four degrees of those signs of Scorpio and Taurus. Wowie. So if you have anything at those degrees, just be aware of it. Um, I'm going to go back to July 24th or so, 25th of 2018 to remind you that there was an eclipse and there was an eclipse in Leo and Aquarius and Uranus was involved in that eclipse. And if you know what happened during the eclipse, um, there was a Mars aspect and it was in the eclipse with Uranus and that was an intense time. And we had an earthquake here in Costa Rica that day and I remember sitting here that morning wondering what was going to happen and we had an earthquake. So maybe you want to think back to whatever happened to you that we're doing some back, we're doing some thinking back again. So while you're thinking back to January, think back to last July of 2018, if anything was going on and happening for you at that point. And maybe there was some sort of consciousness shift during that earthquake eclipse time at the end of July of 2018. Um, even if you didn't have an earthquake, um, but that Mars Uranus aspect feels earthquake like and hopefully your earthquake will be a positive revelation and breakthrough so this is an amazing time to have a break to have a breakthrough next to sunday next weekend aim for a breakthrough point your compass in the direction of a breakthrough because with venus talking to jupiter in a loving way and mars opposing uranus in a, an exciting electric way because we know that Uranus is the unexpected and the electric and the innovative and the, the shocking and the, the excitement of things to come and the brilliance and the genius of a revelation. Don't crack up your car. Mars is automobiles. <laughs> Try to have a breakthrough, not a breakdown. Okay. And embrace, embrace the breakthrough. Something big could happen next weekend that you could um, take advantage of. So look at your life. So here we are, recap. <laughs> um, you're, re you're revisiting 1981, 82. And if you don't have, you didn't have, you weren't born yet, talk to your parents, what were they going through? Or talk to someone you know who lived through that and what it was like. Because we have Mars right now at the end of Libra. Mars goes into Scorpio. So think about, think about that. So we're thinking back to 19... 81, 82. Okay. Then there's thinking back to, you know, the uh, January when Venus and Jupiter were conjunct. Think back to um, whatever abundance was going on in your life then. Then think back to July of 2018. What was going on then? Um, you know, was there something positive and powerful during that eclipse at that time? Well, hey. And Mercury as it stations at 11 degrees of Scorpio, where it was at mid-October the 18th or so, 17th, 18th. Think about what was going on in mid-October. Did anything happen then? Um, as it stations and it's at 11 degrees of Scorpio, it's going to go to 11 degrees Scorpio on Tuesday. It's going to be at 11 degrees Scorpio till Friday, Saturday. It really moves it to 12. So it's moving, but very slowly. So... There's some homework for you. Do a little thinking back. Um, so right now the moon is in Leo. It's going to be in Leo for the next few days. It's going to go void in Leo at 4.11 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday till it goes into Virgo 8.54 p.m. on Tuesday. So, you know, you got about five hours of void moon. That's fine. That's when people going home from work and making dinner and reading the paper. So... Wednesday, it's in Virgo. Tuesday night, it's in Virgo. Wednesday, it's in Virgo. Thursday, it's in Virgo till 1030 at night for about an, uh, 40 minutes until it goes into Libra. Libra, it's going to go void at 1030 that night and then go into Libra at 1020 p.m. Then it's in Libra all day on Friday. And then it goes into void 949 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday the 23rd in Libra and stays void till midnight or so eastern time on sunday morning and then it goes into scorpio so then we'll have another planet in scorpio really we don't have a ton of voids this week to avoid 
voids to avoid, except Tuesday for that five hours. But uh, when we go to Monday the 25th next week, and we'll talk about that more next week, uh, it's going to void at 12.30 in the afternoon and be void for the rest of the day until the wee hours of Tuesday morning. And then we have a new moon at 4 degrees, Sag. So we'll talk about all that. But everything's happened at 3, 4 degrees. Something, Something's brewing. But next week is another whole week to behold. And we've got to get through this week first. And good luck and good fortune to anyone listening and to all of your loved ones and to all of you out there. Peace and blessings and wonderful things happen next Sunday the 24th with Venus and Jupiter and make something wonderful happen for yourself. So this has been the Golden Astrologer Podcast. I'm Deb McBride and I thank you for listening. I am grateful for your listening. I'm grateful for all of you out there and my website is goldenastrologer.com. If you would like to set up a session, you can do that right on my website and my Twitter is at Deb Astrology. My Instagram is Golden Astrologer. My um, videos on YouTube are at The Golden Astrologer, Deb McBride, The Golden Astrologer. I invite you to book a session, get an astrocartography report, read my website, and get yourself more familiar with um, perhaps back episodes of this podcast. Have a lovely week. Be grateful. Enjoy Venus, Jupiter, and thank you for listening.